because they can they can they can sound out words does not make them able to read efficiently. They need to be able to really to really recognize most word patterns. And I think this is one of the the uh, one area where I see <clears throat> probably the the the, the most problem is most problematic is that uh, teachers are afraid they're going to bore children with phonics, um, uh, and uh, so they they tend to want to rush over it. Oh, I hate to make you do this again. He really needs to. So he's absolutely solid with it. It really matters, um, and. Uh, it helps in terms of this business of boring children. I hear that. Oh, they get bored. Um, honestly, truly, I don't think any of the students I've taught, well, some, maybe a couple, <laughs> but most of them have been, you know, I, I guess I have this passion for it, so I kind of draw them along with me. Yeah. I have a five-year-old grandson who's in a Montessori school, and he's been practicing words and stuff. And he's not even in kindergarten yet, because he, mm -hmm. he wasn't until November. And he is so proud and so excited when he can come and go through the words and do the phonics. Yeah, he loves it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And and I mean and um, kids love especially if you can have kids go up and use sound cards and then spell them on the boards and with tiles and stuff. They really they really like it. And then the other thing I hear schools say is, well, you know, we have very good students and really. You know, what about our kids who can read when they get here in kindergarten? Well, you know, those kids don't need a lot of instruction, but if you don't give them something, you're probably going to find down the road that many of them may read great, really well, but they don't spell worth a darn. And so this also supports spelling, you know, and uh, so on. So we want automaticity and uh, just because they can be read, read correctly and independently, they need to be read easily and quickly, both for reading and spelling. Reading is always easier than spelling, so, you know. Um, uh, and remember that to, to, read a, to read a word automatically is going to vary how many exposures it takes. A non-dyslexic child may need as few as six exposures to a new word. A dyslexic child may need 40. You know, generally, um, generally <clears throat> four times as many or more as many word exposures. Um, and that, you know, that takes time. Because what happens then when you get to the slow rate of reading is overwhelms working memory. And um, so that means there's little capacity left. And then just working memory, we throw this around a lot. But just to clarify what it is, is uh, it's we don't have like a region in the brain that you can point to and say there's the working memory. It is a pattern of circuits. However, what it does for us is that it operates very quickly. It serves as a temporary storage place for new incoming information as well as old information that you have to retrieve. Like if you're doing a math problem um, and the, the problem is new, but in order to solve it, you're going to you're gonna have to dredge up a formula or something else that you know or your times facts or whatever. You need to be able to take in the new and add the old in order to manipulate the information. And it also is responsible for focus and attention. So um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's crucial for learning. And when there are work, working memory weaknesses, then you can see then there are um, real weaknesses in other areas of academic achievement, usually. Now, I want to tell you about this wonderful study that I read um, recently and have been, uh, have used to do some interventions with students here. Um, this is a study that was done in 2010 um, by 
some very uh, highly respected researchers in the field of learning disabilities. And what they did, um, uh, they wanted, they took two groups of students, one second grade, another fourth grade, because there's been this kind of, uh, there's been this kind of belief that you can't really work on fluency and on rate, reading rate improvement after a certain age that it won't happen. So they wanted to really test that hypothesis. There's also been another, uh, another belief that we, that when you're trying to develop reading rate, that the student needs to read material that is very easy for them, like 95% of the words and so on. And they wanted to test that, that hypothesis, that too. So they had some people, they had second grade and fourth graders, and they had some of the students read material that they could read 90% or better of the words, and some only 80% uh, to see what would happen. And they, uh, they, they had, <clears throat> they read orally for 15 minutes a day for 20 weeks, every student, and, which is a, a long time. That's like, what, five months, four months, something like that. And um, each student had an adult to read to, which is a great feat in and of itself. But the adult was trained only to do certain things. The adult pronounced difficult words if the student couldn't decode them. And if there was an unfamiliar word, in other words, the student didn't know the definition of a word, then the adult gave a simple, clear definition, easy to understand definition. So they, what they found was at the end of it, uh, these were all struggling readers, by the way. These are not, you know, all of them were identified as struggling readers. And, um, and it was a fairly large study, too. Very well done, really. Their reading rate of the children improved by an average of 30 words per minute, which is a lot. Just reading stuff, not not trying to, not doing reciprocal teaching or teaching comprehension, you know, strategies or anything. The fourth and second graders made similar gains. So it didn't matter that they were, whether they were younger or older. And personally, my experience tells me that I bet if you tested it, you would probably find gains even older, in children even older than fourth grade, because I'm working with some now, and they're doing amazingly well. The students who could read 80% of the text improved just as much as the students who read 90%, so you don't really have to be quite as careful to give them super, e as long as there is support, decoding and uh, vocabulary support. And the other thing, was that their comprehension scores, their scores on comp tests of comprehension, rose for both groups of students. Because comprehension, what, we, uh, what studies have shown, comprehension follows reading rate. Because, I think, you know, the faster that you read, the more opportunity it gives you to think about what you're reading and therefore you understand. The decoding and vocabulary word gains were, did not show significant gains, and that probably is because those have to be instructed directly. Um, so I got very excited about this and decided that, um, and at the, about the same time, uh, a student at Groves here in a, um, who's a sixth grader, uh, her parents expressed great concern that she was reading so slowly. Now she was, she is a pretty good decoder and she's having small group instruction in the Wilson reading system and her teacher is well trained so that is going very well. So she has that piece. Um, and I, so I thought, Hey, I'm going to try this new this new thing. So I started on January 2nd, which is here, 
and her last charting before winter break, she was reading 80 words per minute at the fifth grade level. And she basically went up, you know, shortly after we started and kind of stabilized and then she went up again and up again and we moved her to a sixth grade reading level. So, and it was a month, just one month. And she went, her, she gained 51 words per minute in a month. Just reading, 